Hi everyone, welcome to the LNS Crafts channel. My name's Lorraine and I'm coming to you from Kent in the UK. So, it's been a while, it's been a few weeks. Hopefully you've had enough time to um, kind of settle into this new style of working or living that we're all having to endure at the moment. I won't go on and on about that. I think we all know what I'm talking about. Um, I have a few announcements to make before I get right into the um, video. Firstly, the I have two make-alongs going on in my Ravelry group and the first one is the Socket To Me make-along and that one was originally intended to end at the end of June but in light of what's been going on I've decided to extend it to the end of August so you've got time to enter that one so that one was inspired because I was into making lots of socks in January I just kind of got a bit of a sock kick so I thought let me just do a sock along see if anybody else is willing to join in and see what everyone everyone's making so that's on Ravelry sock it to me sock along ends the 31st of August get your entries in there and the prizes will be awarded for finished objects only so make sure you finish them off you've got plenty of time I may even extend it a bit longer but at the moment the date is going to be the 31st of August I've also um, opened that to Instagram and the hashtag for Instagram for the finished object um, entries is ENC sock it to me so do get your entries in on Ravelry or Instagram and then um, if you're doing it via Instagram using the hashtag do please tag me as well at LNS Crafts so that I can see that you've done that um, haven't had many entries over there so um, yeah so just make sure you tag me so I know that you're entering um, then for those of you that are not into making socks and don't want to try or you, or, you know for whatever reason if you're not doing socks then I have the show it off thread on the Ravelry group um, where you can just post anything that you've been making on in that group so we can all just have a look at it get inspired and just generally just chat and you know have a bit of an atter um, exchange ideas and, and such like so that's the show it off thread on my Ravelry group um, the information for Ravelry group will be in the description box below the video so the last thing I have to say is that I have finally got around to choosing the winners for my 200 subscriber giveaway and um, I used an app I can't even remember what it's called but I used an app that chose from, chose from the comments um, on the YouTube video and it came up with Becky at Back to Blighty for one prize so Becky you will be receiving this um, project bag um, handmade by me I am not sure when I'm going to get out to you but it will be yours I will put it aside um, for when I am able to get to the post office and this will be coming to you so well done Becky thank you for subscribing to my channel and for supporting my efforts at sharing my crafting with the world um, also the second winner was Susan Brooker so congratulations to you Susan you have won this project bag um, also made by me the Christmas tree one I know it's like it's a Christmas tree one but there's the tag it's handmade by me and made with love so I do hope that you will enjoy using this oh I forgot to mention actually one thing that I have been doing to kind of as just to kind of um, get a little bit more practice in with my sewing was I made little pouches for them little lavender pouches I've got lavender in my front garden and I thought I would have a go at making lavender pouches so these are dodgy lavender pouches that are actually go in with your prize so <laughs> I hope you enjoy those as well and that's the other one I've not stitched them perfectly but you know it was an attempt and it's going with the dodgy bag so those are going in there along with some other goodies that I can put together um, in the prizes so yeah so those are the giveaway winners do let me know your details by contacting me on Ravelry and um, send me a private message on Ravelry with your address and I will post those out to you when I can get to the post office so that's the prizes so I think it's time to move into finished objects So the first finished object I have to share with you is a pair of socks. So I have kind of got my sock mojo back and I managed to finish up these socks which I had done one sock of last time. So these are made using Zalba Ball yarn. Um, I might have to start referring to my Ravelry page to 
refresh my memory on what the yarn is called. So bear with me. I don't want to give you incorrect information. So these are Zalbable Crazy Yarn Socks and the colour is Stone Washed. It's a lovely kind of gradient blues. Really lovely and um, it feels quite hard wearing. Let me see what it's made out of. So it's 75% wool, 25% nylon. Um, they're really lovely. They, these are 72 stitch socks because they're for my brother. So they are rather large on my blockers. They are vanilla socks. A lot of most of the socks that I'm knitting at the moment are vanilla socks because I want some kind of mindless knitting to do and nothing too taxing. Something I can do while I'm watching TV or while I'm playing games with my daughter or some you know while I'm busy doing other things. Um, so yeah, so my standard vanilla socks for those of you that are new to my channel are generally a two by two rib. Um, the cast on is an old Norwegian cast on, otherwise known as German twisted cast on. So a two by two rib, then um, plain stocking stitch until I get to the heel, which is a heel flap and gusset, and then straight down to the toe, which is a rounded toe. I keep describing it as a wedge toe, but it's actually a rounded toe. Um, so for that, I do decreases um, every other row until I get to 40, well, until I get to half. Until I get to a certain amount of stitches, let's say that. Until I get to a certain amount of stitches, I do decreases every other row. And then when I get to that point um, where I want to start rounding the toe, I do decreases every row until I get down to uh, 20 stitches in total. And then I kitchener off the toe. And that is how I do my vanilla socks. So that's those. Um, I haven't had an opportunity to give them to my brother yet because I can't travel down to him. It's not essential travel. And... It is what it is. So that's one thing. Then I was working on the Autumn Square last time. I showed you that last time. And um, I had kind of, I think I had everything on the needles. I had the arms on the needles, the bottom, the hem was on the needles. But I have managed to finish it. And I have it here. I didn't want to wear it. I have decided to gift it to an aunt. And... I'm hoping she will like it and I don't want to stretch it out too much. So that's what it looks like. You can see the square in the front there. The garter stitch, the sleeves are done. And I've done the, the split on the sleeves. I had the right, they're actually the right length, unlike the original one that I did. I did a green and brown one for myself and I ran out of yarn. So I had um, kind of three quarter length sleeves for this one. I've got proper full length sleeves, so I'm really pleased with that. And I managed to do the sleeve detail, which is in the pattern. And I'm pleased with the way that's turned out. And also there's the bottom. It does need blocking, but I don't want to block it. I like it the way it is. So I am leaving it as it is for now. Again, I can't get this to her. She lives in the States and I can't get it to her at the moment. So it's just going to have to wait. Um, I did explain a little bit more about the autumn square pattern on my last video so um, if you want to know a bit more info about the pattern I used other than the fact that I've used um, Biff Sugar yarns and this is the colorway Paper Roses and this is the colorway Gone to Earth and they are both MCN Merino Cashmere Nylon Base yarns and the percentage is let me see if I can find it. Oh, let's see. Doesn't say the percentage. I don't think I've got the label. Oh, hang on, maybe I have. Right, so it's 80 10 10 superwash merino cashmere nylon. So that's what the base is for both of these yarns. And they're so it's so lovely and squishy, and I'm really hoping she'll enjoy it. I will. The only thing left to do on this is to put my little tag on it on the front so she knows that it was made by me specifically. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased with it. It came out really nice. I know that Victoria Knits, um, Victoria from the Victoria Knits podcast has been having difficulty with the pattern. I'm hoping, Victoria, that you've actually come to grips with it now and things are moving along nicely for you. If they're not, then do let me know and I will try and help you as much as I can because um, I've done two of these now and if I can help you I will I will definitely help you so just let me know how you're getting on with that if you've 
had an opportunity to pick it up again but I do recommend the pattern it does turn out really nicely I do like it it's a lovely kind of relaxed fit um, jumper and I'm pleased with it I'm pleased with both of them both both um, versions that I've done of that so that is that one so after that I have been do doing a lot of socks so um, with the let me just get myself back on track with the socks I think I started with which socks did I do first just to if there's a bit of a story come on where are you I'm sorry about this my iPad is just got a mind of its own right so there's a bit of a story to this so I have completed these socks let me put them on the blockers for you I had some yarn that I had reclaimed from a pair of socks that got a hole in and I don't think I mentioned it last podcast I got a hole in some socks that look like this if I can find a picture of the socks I'll put them up on the um, screen for you to see um, I got a hole in the socks and then I decided to reclaim some of the yarn and then I thought you know what I actually would like to do a completely different pair of socks out of all of this yarn because I wasn't happy with the way that the socks turned out the first time I just left them as they were because um, I just didn't know how to make socks they were very early on in my sock making days and I think I done the cuff and the leg and the heel and then I ran out of yarn and then I used another um, skein of yarn from somewhere else and did the other half of the sock with that yarn so it was like half of one yarn and half of another and it was really obvious that I'd run out of yarn but it didn't bother me because it was just going on my feet it was just for me it wasn't for gifting so anyway I had the opportunity to reclaim the yarn because of the hole in the sock and so so I just ripped it all back and started again and I have used the reclaimed yarn for the cuffs here for the heel and for the toe and this is both the socks and then the yarns that I have here are all um, scrappy bits of yarn that I had left over in my stash so I'm not sure that one's gone to earth the brown one here this one was a maple syrup by what's it called by bird bird street yarns this one i used it this came out of my um vertices unite shawl that i was working on and then this was i can't remember what that was that was an odd bit of yarn i think this came from ellie at craft house magic it was a mini skein and then this was the other part of the sock that was reclaimed so it's a mix a mishmash of different yarns in here that i've used all um merino nylon bases and I just knit the whole sock, I did the cuff, knit the whole sock, um, all the stripiness together and then I put the toes on and then I split it in the middle and put the heels in. These were afterthought heels, hence the reason that they've got that wedge because I don't know any other way to do an afterthought heel at the moment. That may change. So yeah, so those are done, I'm pleased with that. And then once I've done those, I still had some of the reclaimed yarn left over and I wanted to get that finished up. So what did I do? I started another pair of socks. This time I decided to use some more yarns that I had left over including the reclaimed yarn. So this is what these ones look like. These have a longer cuff, so this is the Maple Syrup Bird Street Yarns cuff that was left over and I used that for the cuffs. Some of the same yarns that are in this sock appear in this one, um, but I did start to run out. You can see a big stripe here and a big stripe there. I thought I could just complete the sock using all of this for the whole foot and then I thought mm, it's not going to look alright, so I ditched that idea. I've done a heel flap and gusset using the reclaimed yarn, there you can see that because I prefer the fit of that and I finished off with the gone to earth yarn for the toes so that was the second pair and then it kind of feels like when I'm trying to work through stash it feels like I've got so much um, scrappy bits of yarn and I just wanted to get it all finished so yeah so then I found my friend sent me um, a skein of a ball of yarn that was a zigzag yarn by King Cole and I thought 
let me have a go at that i think i used up all all of the scraps in this sock for all of those color scraps in these two socks so that was good to go then i had the um these other yarn where is it now where's the socks gone is it that one yes the zigzag socks in the color wool in the color um wild oh gosh what is it called wild orchid so i made these socks get them on the blockers sorry i'm a bit rambly um, but I'm trying to remember, I've done so many socks, I'm trying to remember what I did with them all. So I had this Zalbable yarn left over from a pair of purple Zalbable socks that I made, or brown Zalbable. It's kind of burgundy brown Zalbable socks, I'll try and insert a picture. Um, so I had the, some yarn left over from that, so I thought I would use that for heels, toes, cuff type socks. So here they are. So this is the leftover yarn from the Zalbable, and it's called Schlicht Ficht. Don't remember what that colour is. But that was the Zalba Ball yarn. And then the pink is the Zigzag King Cole yarn in the colour Wild Orchid. And I used that for the body of the socks. And I thought, that looks really good. And I do a, um, for the heel, it's a normal heel flap and gusset. And that is still the Zalba Ball. So this bit, that bit, and this bit is the Zalba Ball. But the Zalba Ball is like a, um, it's a gradient yarn. So you get variations of shades in it. So this one looks slightly different. You can see this is slightly darker. Um, and the tops look a bit more kind of reddish black so yeah so I was pleased with those but then there was still some of the zigzag yarn left over so I decided to use it and make a second pair but only this time I thought I haven't done a different type of heel for a while now I haven't done the fish lip kiss heel for a long time so I'm going to have a go at that so I picked up the zigzag yarn again and the uh, Zalba ball yarn again because there was still some left over only this time the Zalba ball was it had moved into the brown color so now I have brown toes and cuffs and I didn't think I'd have enough for the heels so I just did the normal fish lip kiss heel in the um, the, the main colorway so fish lip kiss heel is a pattern available on Ravelry it's a paid for pattern but it's a very very minimal price can't remember how much I paid for it but it was probably under a pound something like that but it is quite a decent heel look at that you go I didn't get any holes it's very neat and it actually fits quite nicely when I do um, other what do you call them heels what do you call them short row heels they don't always fit nicely on my feet so I tend to stick to the heel flap and gusset I like the depth of that because I can make it deep or short depending on how I'm feeling or how my foot what what's more comfortable on my foot even um but anyway yeah so these are vanilla socks as well and I used the zigzag yarn and I think I've still got I've still got yarn left over that's the, this sock these this yarn is a hundred gram skein of yarn and I've still got I've got two socks out of it I'm on a third pair which I'll show you in whips and it is just still going so that's um value for money <laughs> at least so the yarn is um what's the type of yarn 20 75 25 blend so it's wool and nylon they don't say specifically what kind of wool but it's quite a coarse textured wool so i would think i don't know maybe a bfl something like that but it's a very coarse textured wool and nylon it should be quite hard wearing it's very rough to the touch it feels like um the opal yarn or the west yorkshire spinach yarn it feels it's got that kind of um feel to it so hopefully it'll be quite hard wearing so yeah so i now have two socks in the same colorway um i think that's the end of the socks and like i said i've got a pair on the needles which i'll show you in whips but I have been on a sock kick because it's just nice and mindless and very easy to, to just sit in front of the TV or play board games with my daughter or do something, you know, and while I'm just doing that sock knitting round and round. So I found that quite helpful. Next I have, why isn't that on there? I actually made a hat using the barley pattern by Tin Can Knits. Um, it's quite a well-known pattern but I don't seem to have added it to my Ravelry. I just used some leftover yarn that I had. I think it's Robin yarn. 
um, in a DK weight and this is what it looks like it's quite big for some reason it came out really big I don't know why look at this get it over my hair it is really really big and still quite considering I've got a hair clip on my hair that is fitting right over it so I did whip this up in a day I think I was just wanting to use up some leftover yarn and voila a hat so this will be Christmas gifting um, I will try and pop some info on Ravelry if you're interested in that one but I haven't usually I'm quite good with my Ravelry but for some reason I haven't added that probably because it was so quick making it but that's that then I showed you last time a doll that I was making I was making the Harry doll here um, the pattern is really annoying <laughs> to say the least for me everything is in bits I made quite a few mistakes but I have finished the doll so it has clothes on but this is the doll I finished him off I, I may I don't know I may try and do the hair this is he's supposed to have hair like this um, but I'm not sure about that I don't have any black yarn or brown yarn at the moment to do the hair so um, not in a, like a DK or Aaron weight so I'm kind of I'm in an iron about whether to do that um, so yeah I've made the doll I've put some clothes on him or made some clothes for him which was a little bit tricky because the pattern actually had the clothes for him on there but when I knit it up I was knitting to the pattern and it was just the, the one leg I mean it just wasn't there was no way it was going to fit this doll maybe I've stuffed him too much or made him too big because I've not been following the gauge requirements but if I take his I'll take the careful he's going to show his bum now so if you're if you're easily offended then look away now so I'm going to show you a naked doll <laughs> so let's get that off him okay so I've made the clothes myself I've kind of just been winging it um this is what the doll looks like without any clothes on him his feet turn um, according to the pattern which is quite good I liked that I didn't quite like how you did it um, but you stitch up the back everything is seamed so the stitching is quite painful to look at for me it's not very tidy but I'm hoping um, my godson is not really going to care about that the legs the, the way they make the body is like so he's got a bottom like that so it's kind of rounded I'm not quite sure if it makes much difference that was the um, decreasing or the, the short row shaping for the bottom and the sleeves are just stitched on like that um, and the head it's a really strange construction I've never seen anything like it so it's got like a a roll of knitting on the inside to secure the head to stop the head from moving around which is really really odd to me um, maybe it's just me maybe that's the way that these dolls knitted dolls are constructed but I just found the pattern is really strange so anyway so this is the way the the doll looks now I'm really rubbish at doing faces so I kind of had to improvise by crocheting on the eyes because you're supposed to embroider the eyes on but it wasn't working for me I can't do that kind of thing that's not my area you sew the ears on the ears are tiny and um, they're two pieces sewn together which again was really fiddly um, but yeah, so I've made his him some clothes, which I had to make just, you know, I had to improvise off my own bat and figure out what was going to fit him. So they're quite large. So I made these trousers and just did a crocheted um, chain and sewed it through in and out, in and out the trousers so I could draw the waist in. So they were drawstring waist trousers for him. And then I made him a little tank top, which is this. It's not a perfect fit but it will do so that's his little tank top so um, my godson can just pull it on and off of him so he can undress him my godson's uh, two so he, he you know he might want to dress and undress the doll and at the moment I'm in the middle of making him the jacket which again I am improvising on making this um, to my own specifications because I'm guessing that this jacket is never going to fit the doll that I've made so that's where I am with the doll I've finished the doll so I'm pleased with that 
now I just want to finish the jacket and um, then I will be done and I can gift it to my godson. Like squeezing this over his head is crazy because it, it's quite small. Poor thing, look, I'm ripping his ears off. Anyway, so that's the doll and the doll's done. So that's a finished object. The clothes I'm still making. Um, but I'm pleased with the way that, that it's turned out. It's not something that the pattern is not to me as clear as it could be. So I wouldn't recommend it um, unless maybe you are into doll making and you you do it all the time and you understand the way that things are set up. I just found it really odd the way that it was um, the instructions were laid out, how it explained things. Not what I'm used to. So yeah, and then obviously because I didn't follow the gauge instructions I didn't look at the gauge I just probably made things a bit more difficult for myself so I'm just putting his trousers back on so there he is fully dressed and the trousers are my design and they fit and he's good to go just got to finish his cardigan and that'll be him I'll be able to ship him off so that's that one lastly is it lastly I also have to show with you some cross stitching. I actually finished a cross stitch project. So if you are um, following me on, on Instagram, you will know that I finished the Damask Rose bookmark. This is the actual picture. I have taped it up because it's ready for gifting, but I'll take it out so you can see. This was a kit I bought from John Lewis and it comes with the Ada, the, the floss and the felt for the black back of the bookmark and the tassel so I didn't have to worry about any of that all I had to do was do the stitching and that is the bookmark I'm really pleased with it um, it does say when you finish the actual bookmark it tells you to complete stitch the um, gives you instructions for, for how to make sure that the felt at the back fits nicely and tells you to stitch it on neatly I've done it as neatly as I can by hand and I'm really pleased with it and I'm hoping that my friend who gets this will be pleased with it too. So yeah, so that is it. That's the stitching. I did make some mistakes on the top rows where I'd gone in the wrong line, but I think I've um I think it I don't think it's obvious. I don't think it's obvious what the mistakes are and I don't think that she's really going to care. She's just going to like the bookmark I think because of the fact that it comes with love so yeah so I'm really pleased with that and I was so pleased when I finished that because I literally finished it in about a week um, because I actually had time to sit down and watch it over the um, Easter bank holiday weekend I spent a lot of time on it and um, I had a lot of natural light now that the days are lighter for longer I have more time to work on my cross stitch which is really making me happy at the moment so that was that cross stitch project completed yay so then I have um I had been sewing I had been getting really concerned about wearing having a face mask um, because it was very difficult to source face masks from the internet um with the at the beginning of the coronavirus situation and I think face masks are still probably very difficult to get hold of so I thought I would use some of the fabric that I have which is not a lot and have a go at making some face masks myself so I found some things on internet on the internet um, about the shape of face masks and I found this one which was a folded version I can't tell you where I found this the um, patterns for these but you'll find them all over YouTube patterns for making masks and I made it too small so this one I made it and I got it like that and put it on my ears and look at my ears it's falling off too small but it fits there nicely when you stretch it but it was just too small so I then had a go at making another type of mask this time with the other fabric that I have this time a slightly different shape I had done this original shape but then I decided to put some darts in it so it would fit more over my nose so I came up with this so I've got darts at the bottom here this is not a prototype this is I'm not actually going to bother doing any more of these because um, I've given up but 
this I put darts in the bottom to kind of make it fit my chin and a dart at the top to fit my nose it's still not ideal but that's what I came up with it doesn't fit snugly to the face um, but the upside is I actually had my sewing machine out and I had a play with fabrics and I had a play with sewing stuff and familiarizing myself with my machine so that was fun last one I found this pattern on Instagram Instagram no on YouTube I think I can't remember I found it on the on the internet and sorry my hair's falling down I found it on the internet and I um, there was a PDF link for the, the shape of the mask which it looks like this so I printed it off and had a go at making it and this one I really like but I think I've placed the elastic in the wrong place but this one actually fits quite nicely and I just put the elastic too high it should have you know I should have two really but I ran out of elastic so I've only done one if I had two it would fit perfectly but I ran out of elastic fits nicely up there um, with my glasses on and this is one I was pleased with the only difficulty that I have with this or problem the only mistake even that I made is that I sewed the lining on <laughs> like this rather than I think the pattern I didn't follow the pattern this is my problem I don't like to follow sewing patterns and things I find it very difficult um, and I just want to quickly get in and have a go so that's what I did and I realized afterwards that I should have perhaps sewn the lining over the top of the raw edges um, and then turned it all inside out if I'd have connected the two fabrics and then turned it inside left a hole turned it inside out and then stitched the elastic on it would have been neater but I've got all these rough edges because I was in such a rush to get the mask done and it is what it is I know it's my own fault but I'm glad that I did it because I got the shape right the shape fits pretty nicely and um, yeah it, it to me it's a success because it fits nicely it would do the job if I could bother to use it and I actually had a go at sewing so yes I have been sewing and I'm pleased with myself for doing that even though it's not perfect but that's that so these haven't actually been used because we have um, other masks proper masks <laughs> that we can use but yeah that's that so that is the end of my finished objects those are all the finished things I have to share with you so it's time to move into whips. So my first whip is the socks that I mentioned. So the, I mentioned earlier the zigzag socks that I had, the zigzag yarn that I had left over. And I decided to try again, try and finish up this yarn and make some more socks. And I have got to this point. So I have been using Stylecraft yarn in the colour Raspberry, which is a four-ply yarn. And um, for the cuffs and heels, for the heels I'm doing a fish lip kiss heel that I mentioned earlier. Um, so I've got to, I've done the, the heels, the cuffs on each sock, I've done the heels on each sock, and I've got the zigzag yarn here. And for this yarn, this was a gift, a prize that I won from the back to, Back to Blighty podcast, and it was a mini skein, and I've used that. Can't remember what the colour is. Not sure if she told me what the colour is. Let me have a quick look. See if I've put it on there. What's it called? No, doesn't have a colour. Oh yeah, an evening on the pier. This is from Back to Blighty yarns. An evening on the pier. It's a lovely pink speckled with blue and reds and I used that um, for some garter stitch just below the cuff just for a little bit of interest um, and then the rest is just uh, stocking stitch using the zigzag yarn in orchid and then I've done the heels and problem I have is this one has run out of yarn of the zigzag yarn and this one I've only got this much left so the recipient is going to have to have rather small feet or I'm going to have to improvise with the raspberry on and do the foot in that colour. Um, yeah, I've got to figure that out. Maybe that's what I should do instead of 
continuing with this just continue the foot in the pink I don't know I just think it's going to look a bit odd I'm having to think about this because it was a bit of a surprise that it finished oh what's this oh this is the the yarn label from the pink color this pink color is back to blighty yarns and it's an evening on the PR 8020 cash um, merino nylon base that's that so yeah so that's where I am with these socks. Watch this space to find out what I did next, eh? Um, that's my first whip, which is being housed in this bag. Um, I got this from the Hairy Sheep podcast, so thanks for that, girls. Um, then lastly is a cross-stitch project. So when I finished the bookmark, I decided to buy another cross-stitch project, and I have picked up this one. I posted pictures on my Instagram account. So this is the Bee Bunny and cross stitch kit called sewn with love that's it there and that's what it looks like i thought this was um quite cute because it's got sewing um embroidering going on there which is what i've been doing well not embroidering but i've been doing cross stitching and that looks pretty much like that so i thought that's quite cute plus i have the other one um which is a bee bunny cross stitch project that i finished a couple of what episodes back so yeah, so I've been working on that happily and I haven't got, well, I've got far, I guess, considering I've been working on this maybe three or four days. That's how far I am. Let's just quickly do a comparison picture so you can see the point that I'm at. I'm working on the bottom section at the moment. Um, all the threads come in the kit and the needles and everything, so I don't need to, and the, the ADA, so I don't need to venture out. This is a 14 count ADA and I'm really enjoying doing it and oh this needle minder is by Denkai Designs um, she's on YouTube so she makes those so check her out so yeah so that is the project I'm not sure what else to tell you about the cross stitch project um, by Bothy Threads there but I got this on where did I get it can't remember where I bought it I bought it on the internet, but I can't remember which website. Sorry. Maybe Wool Warehouse? I'm not sure. I buy a lot on Wool Warehouse. Um, anyway, so those are my whips. That's what I've been working on. When I need to have a break from the knitting, I go to the cross stitch. And at the weekend, um, I've been trying to do a little bit more cross stitch because I've got more daylight hours available to do it. So, yes, and I'm enjoying it. Now... All I have left to show you is my incomings. So, as I mentioned earlier, I won a giveaway by hosted by the lovely Becky from Back to Blighty and the Back to Blighty Back to Blighty podcast. And she had a giveaway running, I think, towards the end of the year, um, a charity um, knit along, and I made a couple of things and unbeknownst to me I won a prize because of it so yeah so that was a really nice surprise and one of the yarns was the one that I showed you the pink that I showed you earlier the evening on the pier and also this uncommon thread which is an everyday sport yarn that's the colour there colour is turbillion I hope I've said that correctly but it's a lovely kind of grey with bits of red and yellow in it so haven't quite decided what to make with this yet because it's a sport weight I might just still try and make socks or something because um, it's still quite fine but I don't know yet I haven't decided watch this space we shall see um, also I have bought some Stylecraft yarn which is head over heels all stars these were on sale on the Wool Warehouse website and this one is Saltair and this one is called Walled Gate. I'm not sure if there's some kind of reference there. One of these is going to be gifted and I think I'm going to keep this one. I'm going to give this one away. So um, it's actually got the striping pattern on there on the labels so you can see what they look like. And I'm liking this one more so I'm keeping that one. Then I have picked up another zigzag because I like the zigzag yarn so much and this one is in the colour Ocean and this is 
hopefully going to be for my husband or my son or actually might even end up being for me judging by the other zigzag yarn this one i'll probably get like three pairs out of this so we shall see but um yeah i picked that up as well so that is it those are the incoming things i've bought like i said i bought the cross stitch pattern so that was incoming i am actually waiting for a what's it called diamond painting um print to come to me so that I can have a go at that. I have been watching YouTube videos on diamond painting. I don't even know what got me onto it. I found some diamond painting on YouTube and something on the internet and I thought, oh, that looks interesting. And it's kind of like a paint by numbers, but with beads, with diamonds, or I don't know, they call them drills. Um, if you guys know anything about diamond painting or have any tips to share um, please do share them in the comments section below the video let me know what you know which um, websites you buy your diamond painting kits for more projects and how long you've been doing it that kind of thing share some information on diamond painting because I'd really love to know because um, it's I, I just kind of was looking at stuff online at night um, before bed and I just clicked on a button and bought one not knowing anything about it just thought oh that looks like fun let's have that let's let's give that a try and um now i'm kind of like hmm i don't really know a lot about it i have been watching some youtube videos but like i said i haven't actually had my package arrive yet so i don't quite know what to expect in reality and how long it's going to take me to complete the picture um i'm hoping my daughter my 12 year old can get involved with it with me and do some as well do you think she'll be able to work on one on her own is it easy enough for her you know that kind of thing share some information if you have any in the description in the comments section below this video um so i have some idea of what to expect but i think with the postal system the way it is it's taken a little while for it to arrive so it may be another week or so but yeah, I am heading towards that rabbit hole, the diamond painting rabbit hole. So watch this space. I may even have something to show you in the next video. So yeah, that is it. That is all I've got to share with you this time around. Oh, and if you are interested, the jumper that I've got on is called, what is it called? This was by The Weekender by Andrea Mowry. That's what I have on. You probably recognise it from the neckline. It is a bit warm for it today, but um, this is what it looks like. It's got that stripe down the middle and then the split hem. The Weekender by Andrea Maori. It's quite a nice jumper and I enjoy wearing it. But yeah, that is it from me. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, give me some thumbs up. Let me know in the comments section below um, if you'd like to see what i am up to next month then do remember to click the subscribe button um, below the video and click on the notification so you are informed of when i do another video so generally i upload a video on a monthly basis because i need at least a month to get some stuff done and um, in reality i like to not only do my knitting and my crafting but i also like to watch other podcasts and see what everybody else has been up to and get ideas and stuff so to do that I need to have some time in between videos and so that's why I tend to space them out a bit and also I'm aware that if you're like me you will be watching other podcasts too and you also are in the same boat as me in terms of you'd like to craft in between so um, yeah so I try and just do one video a month so you have enough time to kind of catch up on my one video and everybody else that you enjoy watching so watch this space for the next video it will be up by the end of next month hopefully i can get this one up fairly quickly so it's in time for the end of this month um but we shall see but until next time happy crafting do stay safe and stay home and see you next time